We are most commonly exposed to wireless radiation from our cell phones, mostly because of the proximity, because they're so close to us. See, this is a baseline. There's almost no background radiation right now. And I'll turn on, get out of airplane mode. So that was translating the signals coming out of this phone, which are um, not as fast as visible light, somewhere in between spoken word and visible light. There's the frequency bandwidth for um, cell phones. Um, it translates the, the light, which is electromagnetic fields, is basically a light frequency that we can't see, translates that into a um, a number for us to quantify it, but also into a sound so that we understand the quality of it. And so imagine a light that's just outside the visible spectrum that we can't see that was kind of flickering at the rate that you heard that, that sound. And it is a little bit of a harsh kind of flickery, noisy um, sound we would kind of quantify as kind of a noise. Now, the exposure is not only from the cell radiation, but from the Wi-Fi antenna. So I'll turn on Wi-Fi. So not as high. And this is actually just trying to, of course, this is just trying to contact the Wi-Fi, which is not on here. And you could have quite a bit of traffic if that was connected. And then Bluetooth. Again, not as high, but constant. And so the solution for a cell phone is to turn into airplane mode as much as possible or keep it as far away from you as possible. Your exposure um, dramatically drops off as the phone is moved away from you. So if you keep it in your front pocket, um, try keeping it in a bag or a backpack or a uh, purse or off as much as possible especially at night. The second most common exposure we get to wireless radiation is mostly from the base stations of cordless phones. So you can see, not the handset here, but this base station radiates a very strong signal 24 hours a day, even while you're sleeping and while it's not in use. Here it is. So again, the signal's not as strong as a cell phone. You saw that, um, maybe one eighth of the iPhone that we had, but it's constantly on. And this is frequently in bedrooms right next to the bed. So the solutions would be to move it as far away from the bed as possible, or from sleeping areas, or from areas that you spend a large amount of time in. Um, it's okay to have the handsets around, um, in those areas, but not so much the base station. And of course, using a wired phone, a corded phone, uh, would, be, would completely reduce your exposure. Another way to reduce exposure would be to put the base station on a timer so that it maybe went off at 11 at night and came back on at seven in the morning. And as long as you had one corded phone for emergency phone calls at night, uh, that would um, give you good coverage during the day and the convenience during the day, but then you wouldn't be exposed to the wireless radiation at night. The most common exposure to wireless radiation for infants would be um, baby monitors. So these are very much like um, cordless phone base stations that are, again are constantly running. So I'll plug this one in. 24 hours a day even when it's See that, um, it's actually quite a strong signal, much stronger than the wireless phone, somewhere between a, wire, a cor, um, wireless phone and a cell phone. 
again, on 24 hours a day, usually very close to the baby's bed because you want to hear the baby breathing and the baby noises, which is comforting for the mother, but this is um, you know, not a safe thing for children. Um, I don't know if any studies on this at all, on the safety of wireless radiation for adults, much less uh, children with uh, developing brains. Well, it's almost completely impossible to escape Wi-Fi nowadays, and uh, this is a Wi-Fi router. Again, another source of wireless exposure. Plug it in. This takes a second to kick on. Again, this should not be near sleeping areas and maybe as far away from where people actually um, work or spend a lot of time. Again, like the cordless base station, this could be put on a timer to be turned off at night. So some, some of them have software settings for that, but um, frequently you have to just turn the power off at night. There we go. Exposure. Again, somewhere between not as strong as a cell phone, um, but a little bit stronger than the corded base station that we looked at, as I recall. And again, the solutions are no Wi-Fi. Used, you can use um, core, uh, Ethernet cords or cables, so plug your computers directly into those. You could turn this off at night or move it as far away from your sleeping areas and the areas you spend a lot of time in. Another common source of wireless radiation is Bluetooth, and we've talked a little bit about this on a cell phone, but you'll find this frequently on cell phones, um, computers, uh, with their wireless keyboards and uh, wireless mouses. You'll find it in cars for um, hands-free cell phone kits. Um, so let's demonstrate that again. Again, quite a strong signal. Um, you know, if you have a, a Bluetooth headset that you're wearing continually, you're getting that sort of feedback right next to your head constantly. So not something that uh, sensitive people do. People who are kind of more sensitive to wireless radiation will do at a, uh, will keep the phone away from them like on speakerphone or use a corded headset with an air tube. There are several with air tubes that are quite safe and will give you several inches from your ear without any uh, wireless radiation or electricity at all. And of course the solution for computers would be to use wired keyboards and wired mouses. And we can't ignore computers and iPads as sources of wireless radiation as they try to talk to their antennas. Uh, the, or the cell towers. And this is a um, uh, iPad, and we'll just turn the Wi-Fi on. Some of these also have cellular connections, so these would be more powerful, more like cell phones. And we spend a lot of time on these, so a lot of close proximity and contact, and children are playing more and more with these. So download what you can. The solution is to download what you can and then step out of turn off the Wi-Fi or go into airplane mode. And if you can work offline as much as possible, that's great. Um, there are no wired connections. There are no, uh, like a computer we can plug into Ethernet. Uh, there are, really are no adapters right now for the iPad, which is a little bit disappointing. So you can't get a wired connection on these. This is an e-book reader, a Kindle. And this is off right now, but of course, if you go to connect to the store and turn wireless on, it's very much like a cell phone. And if you leave the antenna on all the time while you're reading, again, it's an amplification of your wireless exposure. That should be coming on any second here.
again, so that is basically like having a cell phone in your e-phone reader. The solution is to, it's still going off now, the solution is to turn wireless off, to download the books that you need, turn wireless off, and then read in peace and low exposure to wireless radiation. Here we are at the base of a cell tower. See the readings are quite strong here. We'd have to set the meter on maximum to get a reading that doesn't go over. And this is also a cell phone antenna. Now you don't see the tower, but you see the small kind of speaker-like structures mounted to this building. You'll, you more frequently see this on multi-story buildings at the very top. Uh, this structure is on top of a hill. Um, so we'll show you the reading right here, but it's very inconspicuous and hard to, to detect. Unless you've got a meter. You can hear again, this is overloading this meter unless we shift to maximum mode and this is even overloading the meter on maximum mode. This cell tower had me fooled for a while. I didn't notice this one. Um, it's right above the barn. It looks like an evergreen tree or redwood tree and you can see the cell phone antennas in the tree. So it's an artificial tree. Um, with a cell tower in it. You'll, most of these are really poorly done and you'll kind of, they'll stand out, but this one's actually pretty well done and I didn't catch it for a while. Again, quite a high signal in maximum mode. You see in the medium mode it's overloaded and up in maximum mode it's still quite high even at this distance. Now the best solution, of course, to finding these, even if you can't see them, is to go around with a meter uh, or to look on antennasearch.com in your local neighborhood, around your office or around your home, and find all the local antennas.